Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me again. It's Alan Barry Labucan here with the Rocks and Stocks News website. Um, I've got another in my series of interviews with CEOs and executives of junior exploration companies. Today, I have uh, Roger Moss, who's the CEO at Labrador Gold. Uh, Labrador Gold was recently in the news. Um, they had a drill intersection, Labrador intersects 76.24 grams per ton gold over a half a meter and defines a new footwall zone at Kingsway. So I wanted to get uh, Roger on the show. Roger, thank you very much for joining me. Hi, welcome, Alan. It's good to be back again. That's for sure. So let's get right into the guts of that news release, uh, Roger. Um, kind of surprised with the market reaction. That was a very good hit. And there wasn't just one good hit in that series of results you, um, you, you announced. So let's talk about that. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, you know, I think that uh, the, the, the expectation is, uh, is pretty big uh, for us to continue coming up with these high grades, but, but also, also to come up with uh, thicker intervals, if you like. Um, something, something more along the lines of newfound gold has been, has been coming up with uh, on a fairly consistent basis, especially, especially at Keats. So, um, yeah, I, I, I kind of, I kind of understand it a little bit, but um, you know, it, it is what it is, and uh, that's, that's what we got. So, I, I'm putting it out there, and uh, we got, as I, as I mentioned, we got a, a third zone now, um, which I think was very positive. Um, and uh, so uh, we've got Big Vein, we've got the HTC zone and what we call the HTC football zone. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, only, we're only really um, figuring out what that, how that football zone fits in and how, uh, how extensive it's going to be. Um, so we've had a couple of hits on there. Um, we've had some high grade hits uh, as well. So, so it's... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a work in progress for sure. Well, 76 grams of gold is certainly nothing to sneeze at. Um, that's at the HTC headline. And, uh, and also you had another hole at the bottom of the hole in HTC hit 0.8 meters of 32 grams. Um, and that foot wall hit a quarter of a gram or quarter of an ounce, sorry. Uh, seven grams uh, over a meter. Um, so it looks like as you got a little deeper there, it got a little uh, wider. Um, and I think what uh, maybe what, you know, caused me a little bit of wondering what the market is looking for is that this is an orogenic gold system and you're right at surface. These things go on forever. Um, yeah. and, uh, so, uh, you know, that, uh, those hits and, uh, where you are is, is something to talk about, I think. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, we know in, in some of these systems, the deeper you go, the, the richer they can get. And, um, we're, I think we're down to about a 200 meter vertical depth now that we've, um, that we've intersected the uh, HTC zone. Um, so yeah, we've got, we've got a long ways to go and it's, it's still open. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're filling in a little bit of uh, a hole there right now and we'll be drilling deeper uh, down, fall, following that down plunge as well. So um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways to go and a lot, uh, a lot of work to do in terms of, uh, of defining defining all three of these zones actually, not just the HTC zone. Yeah, and um, that uh, that depth potential is what really excites me the most because I've seen in other projects like at Red Lake, you know, they had to go down a thousand over a thousand meters to hit these kind of grades um, and really get into the jewelry boxes, and the same thing at uh, the um, the mine in the Fosterville mine in uh, in Australia, where they were 
the swan zone is quite a bit deeper than where you guys are looking. So um, those near surface hits of high grade are certainly encouraging for the uh, checking the depth potential. Oh, I think so. Yeah, I, you know, as, as you said, uh, this the the swan zone is a deeper a deeper zone at Fosterville, and it and it took them quite quite a while to find it. They were they were mining for a number of years um, in the more near surface mineralization um, that was quite a bit lower grade before they uh, got into the in, into the deeper swan zone and and the higher grades that came with it. So, yeah, I think. Uh, you know we're we're fortunate to tag the tag those higher grades uh, near surface. Um, now it's a matter of uh, getting getting better widths and um, you know demonstrating the continuity both along strike and and at depth. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because right now I've got in front of me the uh, HTC uh, zone long section. Yeah. And um, I'm paying particular uh, uh, attention to the the red dots and the purple dots, of course. Um, and uh, and also the the black ones, the results pending. Um, and what I'm seeing there is that there's a pretty good connection of the dots. Um, uh, as you, it it's hard to tell whether it's a plunge that sort of goes northeast to southwest or if it's just vertical um what's your interpretation of that so far roger uh we we, we believe that's a that it's a it's a steeply plunging zone towards the southwest but yeah it's quite steep so is there a possibility that maybe you've got two zones there lining up parallel yeah, yeah, that's possible. Um, because that's what it kind of looks like. You've got that one, vert let's call it a vertical plunge. And those dots, they line up almost perfectly. Yeah. But then you've also got these, these to the southwest. Um, you've got the starting of what looks like another series that are lining up. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite possible. I mean, what 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 we're doing right now, and I think uh, uh, we'll, well, I don't think we've finished that yet. Is we're drilling in between those those areas where there are no dots, and so we'll see if we if we intersect in, intersect similar kinds of mineralization in between um, to sort of fill it fill in the hole, as it were. So there could that could be like an extension or the possibility of a parallel, uh, because those dots seem to be lining up pretty, pretty nicely on that uh, that vertical plunge, if you will. Yes, they are. Yeah. So yeah, it's, um, it's pretty consistent. Yeah, I mean, you've drilled like maybe what eight or ten holes in there, and. You look at the purple dots and the red dots, and uh, you've got a series close to surface. You've got another series, maybe about a hundred meters deeper, uh, and then another series, maybe a hundred deeper, and well, maybe seventy-five deeper, and to the southwest slightly. Yeah. So you, you've got the makings of something that's starting to line up there and get some continuity to it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, you know, as, as I said, we're we're kind of it's it's a work in progress, and um, you know, we're 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 gonna gonna learn more as we as as we continue drilling it. Okay. And so, are there there? It looks like there's a bunch of pending um, holes in that that panel there. Yeah. Okay. And more drill. Is there more drilling happening in that? that panel area if you will yes there is yeah yeah we so we so we have we have one drill rig that's total that's that's focused on that area and uh it's continuing to drill um mostly mostly infill infill that hole and also uh down down deeper so we'll be getting uh we'll probably be getting results from the infill area first and then uh from the from the deeper holes later 
And then we have, you know, I mean, we have we have two other drills working at the moment. Um, one one to the further to the southwest, and one on the uh, on on the new area, um, which is out to about a 800 meters to the north northeast. Okay, before we get on to those other two rigs, I still um, I'm still caught on this HTZ area because uh, <laughs> HTC because um, even though you might be calling them infill, when you're looking at one of these high grade systems and you're trying to figure out the faulting and the plunge uh, and it's in high grade, you need to get fairly close together so that you can start to follow this thing uh, for that vertical extension. Is that correct? Yeah, I, 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 I think so. It's, um, it's, it's something that uh, was, was impressed upon us by uh, Quinton Hennig, who's uh, had quite, quite a bit of experience, as you know, with, uh, down at Fosterville. Um, and when we started drilling this, he, he said, you know, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta do really close space drilling at least until you figure out how the thing is plunging, because otherwise you, you're going to miss it. And uh, if you if you step out 50 meters or even 25 meters, there's a good chance that you're not going to be able to hit what you're Actually, looking for. Even five meters when you're talking about such high grade uh, uh, rock there, um, yeah. you got to be careful about missing it. And you really want to get an understanding of the of the plunge so you can target that depth better. Exactly, exactly. And I, you know, it, I know Quinton likes to show the, uh, the drilling, the drilling pattern that they used at the Swan Zone and they had, they had uh, drill holes going every which way direction into that thing to figure it out, the, the, the geometry of it. So um, they, they aren't, they, they certainly aren't easy deposits to drill, um, but you have to, you have to be sure that, um, you know, you're not, you're not stepping out too far too quickly. Well, another thing that I, uh, he shows in that cross section of the drilling at Fosterville is the complex faulting. And yeah. that's probably why they had to go every which way uh, to understand how that was all acting at depth. Yeah. And yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's a good thing too, right? I mean, the complexity and, and faulting is uh, is usually good for for gold deposits. So it's um, we, we we can't really complain about it. We just have to uh, we just we just have to work harder to figure it out. Well, we talked about that last time we did an interview. That in this case, complex is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. That's what goes into preparing the rocks for these fluids to make their way up and then get trapped uh, and make, uh, you know, a, a, a zone there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and uh, we, we talked to, uh, about it before and, and I talk about it all the time, the, the importance of, of the structures that we have here where, you know, they, especially that Appleton fault zone and the, and the structures that cross cut it. Um, we're finding in the drill in the drilling that we have uh, we have a, a fairly fairly significant fault um, that uh, we've called the big vein fault and uh, you know it's it's certainly going to have some control on mineralization and uh, so far it's it's behaving reasonably well so uh, we haven't we haven't lost any continuity of the of the zones around it but um, you know it I, and and these these are good things to have, as you say. The um, the you got these fall things. You get you get the preparation of the ground that uh, that allows those those gold bearing fluids to uh, to come into come into the crust and uh, hopefully deposit deposit the, the gold right there. And that's that's another important thing. It's often those secondary faults. That are the controls for the uh, for the uh, the juices to flow up there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, set secondary faults, intersections of faults, um, jogs, jogs in stratigraphy. Uh, a lot of a lot of these kinds of things are classic uh, classic environments for where you can expect to see some uh, 
some enhanced gold mineralization. So uh, it's it, it's certainly certainly looks like we have many of those features here, and I think uh, I think the drilling is bearing that out to today. Yeah, and the other thing is like newfound gold. They've been in there earlier than you guys, and uh, maybe they had a bit of luck that um, uh, helped them get a little further ahead. But uh, these kind of targets are tremendously exciting. They, you know, Swan Zone at uh, Fosterville really made uh, you know the the valuation of Kirkland Lake go up quite dramatically in their bottom line. Um, so, um, you know, that, that's important for investors in this space. It's not easy, but it not being easy is actually a good thing. Yeah, you know, and it, it's also the, the risk reward ratio, right? So um, you've got, uh, you know, if, if, if you can uh, decrease the risk and the, the, the reward is certainly there. If, uh, if you can continue finding, finding these kinds of high grades that we do see, and uh, and that that newfound gold see down to the south, um, yeah. The the I don't think anybody doubts the reward. It's whether or not uh, the, the we we can mitigate the risk and and keep intersecting these kinds of grades. Well, one thing I always look for in these high grade systems is continuity, and yeah. um, it looks like you've already got continuity developing at the HTC that looks quite uh, exciting. And then more to look a long strike and more to look at depth. But you start getting those those high grade uh, hits lining up. And that's uh, that's uh, tremendously exciting to me. Maybe the market doesn't uh, get it, but uh, you start lining up a lot of continuity. And that's what makes these high grade mines. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, when when they are high grade, you know, you, you don't you don't need as much as much material. So it's um, you know that's that's a bonus as well. Yeah. So um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, on your news release. You also put out a plan map of um, I'm just getting it larger here of the big vein plan map. Yeah. And. Um, you're starting to see some uh, uh, towards the northern end of that. Um, it looks like you've got two zones that are developing, and there seems to be some good hits along that as well. Yeah, I, I, I don't have the map in front of me right now, but from from uh, basically what what we see is we we have the the the. Th Two main zones, the the big vein and the HTC, and now this uh, this zone that we've just recognized in falls up, up parallel. But in between the HTC and the big vein, is that correct? There's another zone. Y yeah. No, well, I'm not. No, I mean we haven't we haven't identified another zone. Maybe you just identified one for us. Well, <laughs> oh, maybe I'm looking. Well, I'm looking at the, the big vein plan map. Yeah. And I see the, oh, the HTC, oh, sorry. HTC is right beside big vein. And then that other skinnier one, right. uh, that's the foot wall. That's correct. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry, I got it mixed up there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, I, I, I was wondering, I thought, wow. Maybe we do have a fourth zone that we haven't identified yet. You, you can call that one the Allen zone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I think we we covered that uh, HTC zone and the big vein zone, and now this foot wall. They they all seem to be lining up quite nicely. Um, and uh, so earlier you mentioned that you've got two other rigs working right now. Um, uh, is one of them working near that pristine, uh, <laughs> that pristine, pristine target. target? The pristine target. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, that, that started there last week. And uh, 
was the pre, were the pristine grains in the uh, in the float or were they in outcropping veins? I can't remember. We talked about this in our last. Oh, they, they were in till samples. Okay, and because we talked about the importance of that, you know, those pristine grains, they they likely didn't come very far from the source. And what are you using to sort of vector in? on where the potential source is. Is it geophysics? Uh, I, I, is there any outcropping uh, veins? What, yeah, we've, what... got, we've got some information. We've seen, we've seen quartz veins uh, with, with pyrite and um, arsenopyrite mineralization in the area. So that's, that's our target. Uh, that's our initial target um, that we're drawing right now. And um, we'll, get, we'll get more information from that. And then really it's going to be it's going to be drilling based on what we see in the core, because as you know, the the uh, turnaround time for, for assays um, is is quite quite a quite a while still. Um, but we do, you know, we get we get a bit of help from our from our portable XRF in the core shack, um, which can give us some indication if if the uh, core is running high in arsenic or antimony. Um, which which are both pretty pretty good pathfinders that we use in uh, in this system, and um, oh you know obviously if we if we if we see pyrite and arsenic pyrite in the core then that's that's a good sign as well you you got some kind of mineralization um, it would be nice to see visible gold as well um, that could be the source of the pristine grains but the first drill hole might be a bit much for that. So at this point, you're you're really poking around, looking for the quartz veins, and hopefully some pathfinders that will help you sort of keep drilling there. Is that the plan? Is to yeah. keep drilling as you as you see what's coming out of the core. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. We'll, we'll, we'll we'll have that we'll have that rig there uh, for a while and. Um, to, to test that target. And uh, yeah, just, just stepping out systematically um, up, up ice of those, uh, of those pill samples. And this is, this is the golden glove one, right? No, 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 the, the golden glove is somewhere else. <laughs> the golden glove is down at the south, right? Right, yeah. Right, right, and, on, the, right on the boundary with Newfound Gold. Next, and on next the other to side, gold. <laughs> Newfound gold has found some boulders or something like that with high grade, right? That's right. That was that was Big Dave. And so, are you drilling at uh, at the Golden Glove yet, or is it uh, not no, yet? We don't have permits to drill there yet. Okay. How long does it generally take you to get the permits, uh, Roger? I'm sure you want to roll up your sleeves there as well. Yeah. Exactly. No, it, it can it, it it really varies. Uh, usually, for drilling, it takes a while longer. I mean, the last the last permits that we got, um, which which we which we're um, doing right now, would took took three months. So it's not uh, it's not something that we can turn around overnight, unfortunately. Because you're right. I mean, I, that's uh, that's an area that um, you know it's, it it looks it looks very prospective, and we we have been doing groundwork there um we've done we've done some soil sampling we've done a lot of prospecting um so that and, and we, we don't have any any results back from that work but but certainly there does seem to be a lot of quartz veining in that area and uh so it'll be interesting to see what the results look like when they come back so uh even though you're waiting for permits you're not you're still rolling up your sleeves as much as you can to yeah. That's get right. ready to to have drill targets prepared, right? Yeah, exactly. I, and and at the before before we wind down the the the, the field season in terms of the the, the work on the ground um, or the prospecting and that kind of stuff, we'll also do some uh, we'll also do some geophysics over that area as well. So that'll that'll add to the add to the picture. So do the do the geophysics? They don't pick up the veins, but they will pick up structure. Is that right? Yeah. So we so what what we've used 
reasonably effectively at, at Kingsway is uh, ground magnetics and VLF EM. And so you can pick up, you can pick up structure. And the, the neat thing about the VLF, um, VLF was, is, is, is a pretty simple, simple two geophysical tool. Um, but in, and in the old days, it was, it was a really quick and dirty method to have, to get a, get a sense of where there might be structures or, 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 or um, chargeability anomalies, conductors. So, but, but now what, what we're more interested in when we look at the VLF data is we can, we can invert that VLF data and we look at the resistivity. So it's almost like looking at an IP, an IP section. And um, so that's, that's really useful for us because it's, it's, it's a lot easier than doing the IP. Um, you just do it walk, doing a, a walking magnetometer and taking, we take lots of, lots of readings, but, um, and what we, what we've seen um, where we've done it up around Big Bane is that uh, where you get uh, right around Big Bane, you have a, a really good resistivity anomaly because of all the quartz and silica in the ground. Um, and so that's really, that's really a good signature, I think, a geophysical signature that we, that we can use to target. And that will also give you some idea on those cross-cutting features as well? Exactly, yeah. Okay, okay. And so, okay, there's one more drill rig we've got to talk about. We talked about the HTC area and the pristine target. Yeah. Uh, and there's one more drill rig, and where is that? Yeah, so, it, so it, it's a big vein as well, but okay. uh, it's, it's drilling out down to the southwest. I think I think we're up to about a, a I think we've, been drilling about 300 meters now from, so, so the, initial, the initial holes we drilled um, were around where we found the, um, the visible gold in, in, in the boulders last year. And so that's where we, that's where we started drilling because that seemed to be the, the obvious place to start. Um, and then since, since then, we've, we've done a lot of holes around there and that's where we've defined this the HTC zone, the HTC footwall zone, and some of the some of the high grade mineralization there. Um, but we've also been stepping out to the southwest systematically along the Big Vein, along Big Vein. And uh, one of the things that's interesting to see how, how that's developing is that as we go further to the southwest, the vein actually tends to um, the, the zone tends to get wider. So that's yeah, kind of I saw that on the uh, plan map it, it, and I can see why you called it the big vein. It's, it's not <laughs> really skinny. Uh, yeah. It's got some, some uh, width to it. Yeah, and that, that width seems to be increasing as we go to the Southwest. So that's really encouraging. Excellent, excellent. So there it's, uh, some of these dots are starting to line up for you, Roger. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's been it's been uh, it's been good. Like we've we've had uh, we've had the success. We've had some challenges, and um, you know, obviously, we we uh, like like the market to to pick up for us, and um, I, I suspect it probably will um, once we once we get some more decent results out. And um, you know, I, th I think uh, it's I think it, it's a matter of time before we um, before we start. I wouldn't I wouldn't say firing on all cylinders, but if we get if we get if we hit at the pristine target, we get our permits for Golden Glove, and we start hitting over there, then um, you know we we're going to have uh, yeah we, we're going to have a lot of fun. I think. Well, plus you've got that big vein when it opens up like that. That's a, that's a pretty encouraging sign for the potential for some uh, some for those those high grade dots to start keep lining up, if you will. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's uh, you know I, I think things are going things are going pretty well. I'm not I'm not complaining too much. Well, and I think there's another catalyst, not just that you have the potential to deliver some very good grades. Um, is the gold prices starting to participate in the last week 
Um, you know, we've I, I I'm surprised it's not trading over 2000 right now, simply because you've got the supply and demand story that's very bullish. Uh, demand is strong, supply is soft. It's not easy to find these mines. Uh, the you look at the head grades of at major mining companies, they've all been in decline. You look at the uh, resource grades, they're in decline. It's not easy to find these mines and, or the, and um, then now you've also got dramatic increases in US dollar printing and dollars throughout the world. Same thing with debt. Now you've also got inflation kicking in and uh, it doesn't look like that, that can stop anytime soon. So um, I think we're on the way towards 2000 and maybe even higher. Um, we're in a good window from November to February for the price of gold. So what's your view on gold, uh, Roger? Oh man, <laughs> I, don't, I don't try and predict what the gold price is gonna do. I, yeah, I, I, I agree it should be higher, but um, there are so many, uh, high, there's so many factors that go into that. And, and as you, 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 you've named a lot of the, a lot of the positive ones um, and yeah, but it's, it still seems to be stuck and uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't, doesn't seem to want to take off, which is what we would all like it to do. But um, yeah, you know, I, I, I'd certainly be happy if it continues moving up over the next few months. And uh, you know, I think, I, I think it's about time. <laughs> well, and I guess a bigger point to make is that for what you're looking for, um, 1800 and change, there's that, that's so almost per, no problem with that price. Cause yeah, you're looking for something that would be tremendously low cost. So there would be a big margin even at today's price um is that i got that right uh, roger oh yeah i would i would think so yeah yeah i would uh yeah i i, I think i think 1800 dollars is uh is, is pretty good for sure well and especially because these kind of deposits they tend to come in at under a thousand dollars all in or cost to produce so that's a wide margin. And if you guys can keep uh, moving ahead with the drill rig, I know sometimes the market uh, doesn't really get what you're getting and get what I'm getting, but you keep moving forward and that's, that's all you can do. And being in yeah. the place where you are, you're in a place where you can hit those jewelry boxes at any time. Yeah, exa exactly. And, you know, I mean, that's what, that's what I've learned. Um, there, there's, there's, there's only so much you can control. So you have to focus on that and not, not worry about things that you can't control because that's just a waste of time. So, um, you know, that, that, that's what I tell my guys and uh, the, our, our field crew is like, you know, don't worry about what's happening out there. Just worry about what you're doing and make sure, make sure that you're doing it well. And, um, you know, the, the chips will fall where they will, but at least we can be satisfied that we're, we're doing a first rate job and, um, you know, kudos to the guys out there in the field. That's, uh, that's what they've been doing so far. So, uh, I don't expect that to change. You can see it in the, the work they're doing. They found that pristine gold, uh, uh, area, the golden glove, the drilling's going good. Um, so thing chips are starting to line up for you there, uh, Roger. And, uh, uh, I think that, uh, I think you might be surprised with gold in the next little while. I think we're on our way to 1900 plus. Well, yeah, that would be, that would be a nice, uh, a nice present for the end of the year. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on the list for Santa. Hopefully I've been a good boy this year. Yeah. Otherwise you're going to get some coal, right? <laughs> <laughs> well roger before i close it off was there anything else you thought um, our audience should uh, know about uh, uh coming up or even what's been already re re reported maybe you can see something in there that you think uh, 
I know in my experience in exploration, sometimes I would just shake my head and wonder, are you guys not seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> well, that's 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 always that's always the case. But uh, no, I think uh, I think we covered pretty much everything everything there. Um, you know, it's uh, yeah, it, it, it's going well. So I, I I'm I'm happy with our progress and. Uh, Looking forward to to getting more more assays back, and of course, the assays could always come faster. That would be nicer. But um, you know, we're I I think the the labs are doing the best the best they can um, uh, to turn to turn the samples around. So it's um, yeah, I think are I think. You, are you looking at any of this uh, photon assay? Uh, I I know that. Creasels has a lab uh, in Canada. Um, are you looking at any of that, uh, Roger, to speed things up? Well, we certainly, yeah, we we certainly had a, had some thoughts about it, and of course, over the last uh, well, over the last few days, I mean, it's been it's come into into pretty stark focus, and um, I, uh, I I I like what what uh, newfound gold. Are proposing to do, I think um, you know it. It is, it is uh, as you know when you have the the nugget effect, the the assays. It it it's difficult to get a, a, a representative assay um, from a small a small sample. Well, um, one time someone put it into context for me. He said, "Well, look at your desk." And say there's a diamond over on one corner of your desk, and and you poke a little two and a half inch hole into the other corner of your desk, you're not going to find that diamond. No, um, exactly. exactly. And high grade gold is very simple, si similar. So if you can at least sample the entire core instead of half of it, um, that's going to give you a more representative idea of what you've drilled into. Yeah, exactly. That I think that's and that's that's a big part of it, um, and of of doing this, of doing this crisis. Uh, what what is it? The photon assay. Photon assay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and the fact that it's non-destructive is great because then you you keep your you keep your core, um, and uh, you can you can do your normal assays on it afterwards if you if you want to. So there there, there are a lot of pluses. And we will certainly be keeping an eye on on what newfound gold do. Um, and My understanding is it's much like an X-ray. Yeah. And you know, in diamonds, you use X-ray sorting, and if it can pick out those little grains of diamonds, it sure should be able to pick out the 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 yeah. VG as well. Yeah. No. Exactly. Exactly. So it's uh, yeah, it's something that we're monitoring. Um, I'm I'm happy with uh, with the lab with uh, Eastern. Um, we don't see any any issues with our quality control samples. So um, so far so good there. Um, but we but we also do we do a lot of um, metallic screen assays where we assay the the entire half core um, just because that gives us a, a more representative sample than your typical thirty gram. Subsample that you send for fire assay. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that we that we think about that have to go into it. But uh, but so far so good. Yeah, I don't have any complaints. The one I just remembered one thing that uh, we can close on. You're heading over to Europe for some marketing um, to institutions and stuff. Yeah, well, I'm I'm going to uh, on on Friday and Saturday of this week. There's a there's a gold conference in Frankfurt, and uh, so I, I'm presenting there and uh, meeting some some of the uh, European investors and uh, telling them about the uh, the Labrador Gold story. Um, interestingly enough, I think uh, I I think we will be the only only company there from Newfoundland. So. I'll be waving the entire Newfoundland gold play flag <laughs> in Frankfurt on the weekend. Well, you know, one thing I do like about European investors, they don't seem to be uh, watching that stock quote so closely. 
uh, as uh, some of our friends in Canada and the United States tend to. Uh, and they kind of take a more of a big picture look at things. So you're very good at explaining that big picture stuff for your project and for uh, the Appleton Fault and Newfoundland. So I'll keep my fingers crossed for you, Roger. Go over there and do a great job. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. I'll do my best. Okay. I'm going to close it off, Roger. So there you go, folks. Um, uh, Labrador Gold is a very exciting play because of the structural story, the Appleton Fault, the potential for finding uh, cross structures that can help with the fluids to make their way up. Uh, they've already hit high grade. Uh, in their drilling and also in their surface sampling. So it, it shows you that this is a, <clears throat> a prime area that checks off all the boxes of what you want to look for when you're looking for an orogenic gold system. And those zones are not easy to find, but if you start tagging them, um, those jewelry boxes can be fabulously profitable, fabulously high grade, low cost to mine them, high margin. Uh, and uh, so they've got a lot of catalysts ahead of them, a lot of money in the bank to do that good, solid, strong work that needs to be done to understand these systems. And uh, I still think they've got a heck of a, a modest valuation considering where they are and what they're looking for and what they've found. As always, my shows are for information purposes only. And I, I always stress, it's important for investors to do their homework. And that homework helps you to understand what they're looking at. Go to their website, look at their news releases, look at the cross sections, try to understand this. And you should do this with all companies that you're looking at um, because that will make you a better investor. And it's that kind of research that helps you to, to have better returns. I think the risk reward for Labrador Gold is quite tremendous and in favor of those that are looking at it at these valuations. So do that homework, check out Labrador. I'm gonna keep having them on the show because I like talking to Roger. He's my kind of no-nonsense kind of guy. And, uh, and I think they've got something special here. So. Do your homework on them and uh, we'll talk to you soon.